Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. Today was the day, the pro day of potentially future Patriots franchise quarterback Drake May at the University of North Carolina. And if you've been watching clips on X and been hearing from Patriots fans, you would think he is the second coming of Tom Brady with more size and more arm strength. And maybe he is. We don't know. He certainly is going to be a project wherever he goes in the NFL. But Drake May really did showcase his big-bodied passing skills. And overall, if you watch the clips, he looks pretty good. He threw about 70 passes during his throwing session, but that doesn't mean there weren't some concerns coming out of it. Clearly, the guy had some jitters going in. Uh, threw 70 passes, and there were a bunch of clear misses early on on deep routes and slants. That, you know, passes that an NFL quarterback should be making, particularly without defensive pressure. But there was a lot of pressure on him, right? I mean, being in this situation, he's the guy that people perhaps have the biggest question marks about, um, was presumed to be the number two quarterback in this draft for the last couple of years. Suddenly, Jaden Daniels wins the Heisman, shoots up the charts. Most people think he's going to go to the Commanders at number two overall. And now you have J.J. McCarthy nipping at his heels, and the Patriots are certainly interested in McCarthy and so are the commanders. So Drake May could drop even more. So even though pro days don't mean a lot in the scheme of things, there was a lot more pressure, particularly on this pro day for Drake May, than I think some of these other quarterbacks had. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, too. I mean, the, these teams meet with Drake May. The Patriots met with Drake May just this morning. They met with Jane Daniels the night before his pro day. They met with J.J. McCarthy at the University of Michigan. They get a chance to get to know these guys a lot more than, you know, the 15-minute interviews that they have at the NFL Scouting Combine. And they certainly had some time to to nitpick May a little bit, watch his mechanics in real time in person, and get to know him. He didn't participate at the NFL Combine. So this was really the first time Gerard Mayo, Elliott Wolf, and company had a chance to see him throw the ball in person. And the Patriots had a lot of people there. They sent eight coaches and executives to watch May's Pro Day. Mind you, they had nine at LSU's Pro Day yesterday to watch Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thompson, and company uh, perform there. And uh, I know a lot of people are like, well, they only had eight in North Carolina. They had nine at LSU. The reason why was uh, college scouting director Cam Williams traveled all the way to the Pacific Northwest to the University of Washington to watch Michael Penix's Pro Day, which is interesting because this is really the first indication the Patriots have had some interest in Michael Penix. But eight versus one, they're clearly looking at the top-tier quarterbacks, had pretty much the full crew except for that one um, scouting director, Cam Williams, at North Carolina as they did at LSU yesterday. But after Drake May missed a few throws, got the jitters out of him, he played much better among those 70 passes at his NFL Pro Day. Um, After a quick huddle with his receivers, May got into a real groove and demonstrated pinpoint accuracy. Really good lining up under center under the play-action drop packs, uh, which is a a big adjustment for a lot of NFL uh, rookie NFL quarterbacks who were in the shotgun a lot in college and certainly – Drake May was in the shotgun on most plays, similar to Caleb Williams, similar to Jaden Daniels. I think only J.J. McCarthy is the guy that has a lot more experience under center just because they handed the ball off like crazy at Michigan, but he threw the ball a lot less because of it. But Drake May didn't seem to have too steep of a learning curve, at least without the defense in front of him, lining up under center, doing those play-action dropbacks. And he was surgical on some of those deep throws, throwing on the run, throwing off platform, displaying his arm strength. It really does look effortless from him. Now, uh, I think he impressed all the scouts, not just for the Patriots, but for the Commanders. We saw the Commanders uh, uh, coaching staff there, their front office. They were cracking jokes with Drake May after his performance. They looked to have built a good rapport there. So you know the Washington Commanders are interested as well. We've seen some mock drafts. Joel Klatz, for instance, had Drake May going to the Commanders and number two overall. Um, so going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But overall, May's physical prowess, his ability to throw crisp, accurate passes all over the field were on display, except for early on when he missed on some of those deep out routes and quick slants that he really should have been hitting. 
Uh, but his deep passing skills, go watch the clips on X. Very impressive. And I think what what is most impressive about Drake May relative to Caleb Williams, J.J. McCarthy, Jane Daniels, is the ball just comes out of his hand so easily. Yes, doesn't have maybe the best mechanics. I think bet- he ranks fourth among those guys in terms of footwork, in terms of the way he releases the football. But when the football comes out of his hands, it glides fast, quickly, and gets to the target. And he certainly tops all of these quarterbacks by far, in my opinion, when it comes to arm strength. And it really showed. I mean, he's throwing 65, 70-yard bombs downfield, off balance, on the run, and it almost looks effortless. And that really is the biggest strength of Drake May. It reminds me a lot, not even of Justin Herbert, but of Josh Allen. You know, you watch him throwing off his back foot and he launches the ball 70 yards downfield. Josh Allen did not have a great final college season at Wyoming. His numbers were actually a lot worse than Drake May's. Um, And Drake May didn't have too great of a a final season at North Carolina. The year before was significantly better, and that's what put him in the conversation, saying, hey, this would be a number one guy if Caleb Williams weren't in this draft. But we saw that all on display at his pro day. Again, it did not address a lot of his concerns about his ability to make the best out of bad situations under pressure, which certainly he had plenty at North Carolina had the worst offensive line compared to certainly J.J. McCarthy, who had the best, and Jane Daniels, who had a pretty good offensive line. Caleb Williams, not so great, but much better than what Drake May had to deal with at North Carolina. But either way, I think this pro day performance solidified his position as a top quarterback prospect in the 2024 NFL Draft. He's going to be either the second, third, or fourth quarterback drafted. I don't think Bo Nix is going ahead of him, even though a lot of people really like him. I like Bo Nix, too, but I think Bo Nix is a mid-to-late first-rounder. Um, his arm strength, his consistency throwing 50-plus yards is just some of the best I've ever seen coming out of college. Uh, reminds me a lot of Drew Bledsoe, but with a lot more athleticism, a lot more mobility. But look, at the end of the day, this pro day performance was a mixed bag, but I think he showed enough potential to remain among some of those top draft prospects. I don't think he necessarily hurt himself with some of those early struggles, some of those early throws where he missed. But look, and I got to go watch these things in full. I've really only seen clips from each of these guys, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, and now Drake May. But I hate to say it. And I've been kind of jumping on the hype train a little bit this last week. Been tweeting a lot about it. But when it comes to those four guys and their pro days, and I know pro days only mean so much. But when it comes to those four guys, J.J. McCarthy had the best one. At least from what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've read. Looking at his mechanics, his footwork, his ability to throw on the run. Seemed to miss the least number of passes. Hitting receivers on target right in the center of their chest. Drake May certainly, if you look at the latter half of his pro day, probably performed just as well as J.J. McCarthy did. But when you look at the totality of it, each of these guys throwing around 70 passes, these are all scripted plays. They're designed to showcase all of their abilities. Drake May certainly threw a lot of bombs, and that's his biggest strength. J.J. McCarthy seemed to have the best showing, even compared to Caleb Williams, who had a very good pro day, but also spent a bunch of the time just kind of clowning around, which is not helping the Caleb Williams red flags issues that people have with him. But the Patriots aren't getting Caleb Williams, right? He's going number one to the Chicago Bears. So they have a very challenging decision here to make. And I would assume all three of these guys, McCarthy, Daniels, Drake May, in addition to probably Penix and Bo Nix, are going to visit Foxborough, do top 30 visits, do private workouts, and they're going to answer a lot of questions. We know J- uh, J- uh, Drake May can work the room, is a real leader, and is some of the best of these QB prospects when it comes to the whiteboard, all of that. So is J.J. McCarthy. I think they top that list in terms of having a good interview. They're always going to uh, become very likable with whom they talk to. Jaden Daniels, a little bit quieter. Um had a decent pro day as well, did miss on some throws. But um, I think what Jane Daniels really tried to emphasize at his pro day yesterday was 
hey, I'm a good teammate. There were some red flags raised about me when I was at Arizona State, but you know, one of my former teammates has cancer. I'm going to wear his name on the back of my sweatshirt. I'm going to spend the time rooting for my teammates, cheering on the Link neighbors who ran an incredible 40-yard dash. That's what I'm going to emphasize is the type of teammate that I am. J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, their emphasis is, look how great of a leader I am. Look how strong of an arm I have. Look who I can hit effortlessly throwing the ball 70 yards downfield. So Patriots, again, very challenging evaluation. These next two to three weeks are going to determine the future of the franchise. Are we going to have our next franchise quarterback Or are we going to be talking about drafting one of these guys again in 2027? Are we going to be talking about this next year? Are they going to trade back? We know Robert Kraft at least floated out the idea of trading back, although it seems like he wants them. He didn't directly say it, but it seems like he implied he wants the Patriots to get a top-rate quarterback. You're only doing that probably selecting at number three overall. I'm not sure how happy Robert Kraft would be about the Patriots selecting J.J. McCarthy, but they seem to really like the guy. McCarthy doesn't have the size of the arm strength as Drake May, doesn't have the speed of Jane Daniels, doesn't have the instincts of Caleb Williams, but he does have the clutch factor. He has the chutzpah. He has the moxie. He has the leadership, and he has a national championship under his belt where he made some incredible plays down the stretch. He's also the best of these four quarterbacks when it comes to third and long, fourth and long, throwing it beyond the sticks, high pressure situations. In fact, Drake May ranks at the bottom of the list when it comes to those situations, behind even Bo Nix and Michael Penix. So, I don't know. Drake May maybe is the best choice for the Patriots because they are rebuilding. They are not expecting to be a Super Bowl contender this year. I think we can all say that with certainty. And with that in mind, he's a guy that's considered to have maybe the lowest floor, but the highest ceiling. Gerard Mayo said his ceiling is limitless. And you have him sit. I think he is among those four top quarterbacks. Probably the guy that needs to sit the most and learn from a Jacoby Brissett. Maybe learn from Bailey Zappi a little bit. And then he comes in around Thanksgiving or midway through the season or in year two. After learning from this, working on his mechanics a little bit, learning to run the new Alex Van Pelt West Coast style offense. Really tough decision, Elliot Wolf. Gerard Mayo, Alex Van Pelt, their jobs, they just got them, but they're going to be on the line. And we heard Robert Kraft. I don't necessarily agree with this, but he says, we're going to get through the draft, and then we're going to address the front office situation. Will we name Elliot Wolf as the general manager? We'll see. We'll see how he does in the draft. So if there's anyone feeling the pressure right now, it's the de facto GM, not the formally named GM, Elliot Wolf who is going to be ultimately the person that makes this decision. If he selects Drake May, I think that gives him a little bit of insurance because there is this understanding that Drake May has a lot to learn. But here's what I will say about May. Faced a lot more adversity in college, certainly than J.J. McCarthy, who faced basically none. Certainly more than Jane Daniels, who had a solid offensive line and more weapons than everybody else. And... Certainly more than Caleb Williams, who I think faced a fair share of adversity himself. But a guy that you could put behind a rebuilding offensive line, a receiving core that is going to take probably a couple of years to put together. Drake May is used to dealing with that. He's used to being under pressure. Even if he didn't succeed so much under pressure, he's going to be a guy that you're going to be able to throw out there even if it's in week one and he wins at training camp, he wins the job, you're going to know like, all right, this is nothing new to him. Whereas you had a guy like Mac Jones who had everything at Alabama. He had a great offensive line. He had a better receiving core than he even worked with in New England. He had Josh McDaniels his rookie year. And then when McDaniels left, when Jacoby Myers left, when the going got tough, when he had a new offense with Matt Patricia, a new offense with Bill O'Brien, he could not excel and he really regressed significantly drake may you put in that situation well he's faced that adversity through college that mac jones didn't have i think that's the best case for drake may the raw talent the raw athleticism the raw arm strength the skill set that he can bring which is kind of a hybrid of justin herbert and josh allen 
there's a lot of reason for the Patriots to draft Drake May. There's a lot of reason for the Commanders, a team that is rebuilding as well, to draft Drake May. What happens if they select him? Then the Patriots have a tough decision. Do they want to go with J.J. McCarthy, who seems to be shooting up the boards, or do they want to go with a potential game changer, a mobile quarterback that they've never really had in New England? I don't even count Cam Newton because he couldn't throw, and he was up there in age. Jane Daniels going to be able to handle a mediocre offensive line. He's going to be able to escape the pocket and gain 20, 30 y- yards downfield very easily. Very tough decision. I do not envy Elliot Wolf or Gerard Mayo or Alex Van Pelt as they do this evaluation. They're going to get as much information as they possibly can. We'll be here to cover it on Pat's Cast the rest of the way. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, or subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. We'll be back with more Patriots coverage, more breaking news as it comes out uh, throughout this weekend, throughout next week. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can get all of it, and uh, we'll see you later.